What's up Nightwalkers? Today I've got the BMVD 1531. The 1531 it's not as popular or as well known as its big brother which is the L3 Harris BMVD most commonly known as the ANPVS 31 Alpha. Most people just call it the 31 or the 31 Alpha and so the reason the 1531 exists is because the 31A it didn't have some features in the design that some end users wanted and with enough requests by these end users to L3 Harris, L3 Harris went ahead and made the 1531. All right, so I'm gonna run through the features real quick that they added to the 1531. And of course, these features are, are what separates the 1531 from the 31 Alpha. And so what they did is they added um, the use of PVS-14 style optics. You know, specifically, they wanted adjustable diopters for the eyepieces because the 31 Alpha does not have adjustable diopters. Uh, the use of PVS-14 style objective lenses, they added an onboard IR illuminator. 31 Alpha does not have that. And then they relocated the battery pack connector position from here, that's where it is on the 31 Alpha, to back here on the 1531. Now adding these features did add weight. I'll just wait here for you real quick. And so I've got the battery installed inside of it. It's an Energizer Lithium AA L91. And so you're looking at 19 and a half ounces. The single most important feature that they added are the adjustable diopters. The 31 Alpha, they don't have adjustable diopters. They come standard with a negative 0.5 diopter, which is good for 95% of people. You know, however, if you don't fall in that 95%, if you have a 31 Alpha, you're gonna have to buy a replacement diopter to put in there for your eyesight. Whereas with the 1531, you could just adjust it as needed for your eyesight. And now where this is also important, you know, if you're gonna be sharing this device across other people, whether it's your loved ones, friends, or let's say you're in an organization and you got multiple people using the same devices, uh, then, you know, in my opinion, having adjustable diopters is the way to go because then each person who's going to use it can set it for themselves so they get the best image possible. All right, let's get into the 1531. And the first thing I want to talk about are these IPD stops, you know, because a lot of guys I've seen get confused about how this thing works. You know, so IPD stands for interpupillary distance, and that refers to your eye spacing with the eyepieces. You know, you got wide eyes, you got to go wide, you got narrow eyes, you got to go narrow. And so on a different system, like this is an Anvis 9, uh, it's a fixed bridge system, the way that you adjust your IPD is when you turn these screws, you can see it moves it you know, left to right to line it up for your eyes. Whereas with an articulating goggle, the way you do that is you just have to rotate these things or you know, articulate them to line them up with your eyes. And so what the IPD stop system does on this goggle, as you see the screw in the bottom right there, right there, so when you turn it in, it comes out more, and when you turn it counterclockwise, it comes in you know, away from it. So what that does is, um, if you don't have this thing set to your eyes, what happens is you could blow past where your eye is and then you just have to bring it back. Whereas once you have it set, it's just gonna stop exactly where you want it to in front of your eye. Articulating goggles like the 1531, they have some distinct advantages to them compared to goggles that are fixed bridge. And by fixed bridge, what I'm talking about is that this bridge assembly right here that the monocular pods connect to, you know, it's fixed in place. It doesn't, it doesn't move at all. So the way you use this type of goggle is you have it down in front of your eyes, and when you don't want it in front of your eyes, you just flip it up. Those are the only two positions of usage with a fixed bridge goggle. Whereas with the 1531 and other goggles like it, you know, on the bridge assembly, the binocular pods are connected on a hinge, which then allows you to, to basically rotate these things up away from your eyes. And so the advantage to doing that, so for example, you have this down in front of your eyes, you wanna use your eyeballs, you don't necessarily wanna stow your goggle, you just move them out of the way. So you can do one at a time, both, however you wanna do it. And then it also has the advantage to where, you know, when you have it flipped up on your helmet like this, as you can see, it's gonna put the goggles up. Uh, they're more of a snag hazard as well as the weight sticks out more. So it d definitely causes some more stress on your neck. However, you have the ability to articulate them back closer to the helmet which then brings the weight closer to the helmet, makes it more comfortable and then less of a snag hazard. This is the power switch. You know, don't worry, I took the battery out. But basically, one press turns it on, you hold it down for two seconds, it turns it off. Now, once you have it turned on, uh, this also functions as your gain control knob. You know, if you're not familiar with gain control, it just refers to how much brightness is coming out from, your, the, from the eyepieces. And so you could turn down the brightness or turn it back up, depending on how bright you want it. Now, another thing with this uh, power switch is it actually functions as a way to program the goggles. And by programming the goggles, um, what I'm talking about is uh, you could set if you want this thing to turn off automatically when you stow it um, or, to, or to not do it. And so a lot of people don't understand why that's important, you know, and I'll just kind of run through it real quick. So the 1531, the way it comes standard, you know, so here it is on your helmet, down in front of your eyes, you know, you flip it up. The 1531 is going to turn off. It goes into a sleep mode. And then when you bring it back down, 
in less than 30 minutes, it's going to turn back on automatically. You know, if you have it up here for uh, more than 30 minutes, it's going to permanently turn off uh, to where if you flip it back down, you just got to press the button once again to turn it back on. Now, people want to people don't know why you'd want to disable that. Um, and so basically, I'll just give you a couple of examples as to why, you know, you may not want to have this thing turn off and on auto automatically based on its position. So, for example, you know, you got these down deployed in front of your eyes. Maybe you got to get on your back for something. You know, I don't know, you're sliding underneath something, whatever. Um, you don't want them to turn off, you know, if these are in front of your eyes. So that's one reason you, you don't want them to turn off. And then likewise, let's say you flip them up on your helmet and they go into sleep mode. But now, you know, you got to bend down. And even though this is stowed, you know, you're bending down to use your eyes or something. Um, you don't want these to come back on and then put light down on your face. And so, you know, that's just a couple of reasons why you might want to disable, you know, the feature where it comes off and on automatically. It uses one single AA battery inside the goggle. And then uh, you can also get it with this battery pack, which holds four AA batteries inside of it. Now you can order the 1531, um, at least from TVC, you can buy it with just the 1531 goggle by itself, or you could buy it in a kit with the goggle and the battery pack. Uh, myself personally, I'd, I'd recommend getting the battery pack. I think it's a pretty cool feature. It's not necessary, however, on a single AA battery, you're definitely gonna get more runtime out of these. And so by runtime, you know, with a single AA, you're gonna get 12 hours out of it. And then with the four batteries in the battery pack, you're gonna get about 48 hours. And then the battery that you wanna run, it's gonna be an Energizer Lithium AA. Uh, that's what L3 Harris tells you to run. That's the best battery. Uh, because unlike alkaline batteries, you're just not gonna have the same type of corrosion problems, which is really important when you're using a battery pack because you're, you're probably not gonna be taking the batteries in and out of here very much. Uh, until you, you run them down all the way. And so leaving alkalines in here, you don't want to have any corrosion problems to where you got to replace the battery pack. And so definitely run uh, the Energizer Lithium AA's non-rechargeables. Now there's a common misconception with these devices that come with battery packs. You know that the battery pack is meant to be the counterweight solution for the goggle. And that's just not uh, true. You know, you can certainly do it. However, you know, these battery packs just don't offer enough weight to offset you know the weight of most of these devices you know for example this battery pack with four lithium double a's in it it weighs less than six ounces you know this thing without the battery in it like if i'm using it with battery pack you know weighs 19 ounces you know so you could obviously see that there's a math problem there and even with uh, lighter devices like the 31 alpha you know they are closer in weight you know and you can you could definitely try to use the battery pack with it However, it's still, you know, still not quite there. Uh, so, so if you do run something like just the battery pack with it, you're gonna have to really tighten up your helmet and get your straps on there. And even then, um, if you're doing a lot of movement, you know, you're gonna have your, your helmet dip down on the front, you know, which isn't ideal because your goggles are gonna tilt. And so you're not gonna get the best image out of it as well as it's very uncomfortable and you'll end up straining your neck a lot. You know, so for something like this, for example, on this particular helmet, uh, what I would do personally is I would use something you know, like this TNBC Mohawk. This is a Mark II. You know, we do have a Mark I, which is just a pouch meant for the uh, uh, the cold weather battery pack, and it fits in there. Now, with this with this thing, it'll fit inside here because there's enough room, and then the cable itself does fit. You know, it's a 90 degree, so it comes out, and then you could stuff some extra weights in here, like lead weights, like these things, and jam them in there. And then now you have a, a way to hold the battery pack uh, to use it as part of your counterweight and then you could add some additional weight you know inside of it as well to help uh, function as a counterweight with the battery pack you know this is actually called the cold weather battery pack you've got the switch over here on this end the left side and so this switch um, actually activates an infrared strobe um, which comes out of these two ends right here it's not a power switch which i know some guys have gotten confused by it before because like an anvis battery pack you know, um, has a switch up here on the top. So does the AB Night Vision Low Profile Battery Pack. And what that switch does on the top, which isn't present on this one, is it turns on, it off and on basically, and then you can select which two batteries you want to operate. Uh, with the cold weather battery pack, um, you're just going to run all four at the same time, basically. And so uh, this switch, you know, if you have it turned on and you forget, you know, you're going to run down your batteries by running the strobe. This is on the back. This is where you'll put your bungee hooks or maybe put a split ring through it, you know, to connect your bungee or lanyard. You can mount a clip-on thermal on the 1531. You just have to put it on the objective lens right here. You know, because normally where you'd put this bracket is, or this ring is right here on the infinity lock ring, uh, which isn't present on the 1531 and the housing's pretty thick. So you just take your clip-on thermal, uh, you get the bracket in this position right here, 
and you stick it on, it does clear the housing, it does work. Um, you just gotta be careful because with it on the lens, you know, it's kind of easy to change your focus. With the battery pack cable connector relocated to the back, it doesn't interfere at all with using the, the device. You know, unlike the 31 Alpha, with the battery pack coming out on this side, you know, it would interfere with this pod whenever you'd articulate it up, it'd make contact with the cable and it would limit how far you could adjust it as well. Um, as well as it's more of a snag hazard, you know, coming off on this side versus back here closer to the helmet. To wrap up this video, I really like the 1531 a lot because it's essentially a PVS 31 Alpha for less money with adjustable diopters. I mean, that, that's what it is. You know, when you order this thing, um, you can get it with two different um, tube specifications. So you can get it with tubes with a minimum figure of merit of 1792, or you can get them with tubes that have a 2376 uh, minimum figure of merit. Like, I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail on that stuff here. I'll put some stuff in the description. Uh, but basically, the 2376 uh, FOM tubes are the same ones that come in the 31 Alpha. So if you buy that in the 1531, you're getting the same tubes, and then you got the adjustable diopters, and it's less money. So that's, that's the main um, attraction for the 1531. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments sections, uh, section, and thanks for watching.